the book festival celebrated its 25th anniversary a couple of years ago, and we all marveled at the time just how the book festival had transformed from a couple of tents in Charlotte Square in, uh, in the center of Edinburgh with mainly local authors to the international literary event that it is today. It is literally the biggest book festival in the world and it's the best, and I have to say that. Um, but that only happened because of the drive and the determination and the ambition of the people involved with it. Everyone from authors to the organizers, sponsors, the international celebrities who appear in greater numbers every year at the book festival and at so many other festivals. They all contribute to the cultural base here in Scotland. The book festival, as with some others, feels its own responsibility to help the environment and to reach out to people who would otherwise have limited access. It has natural resources in mind when it produces its program. So it uses recycled paper. It uses recyclable bags for when people purchase books. It thinks about the detail. It also thinks about those issues when it comes up with strands or themes in the program. So that uh, issues such as uh, environmental concerns or sustainability will come out again and again in some of their, uh, in some of their programs. The book festival also has access in mind when it creates a way for teachers to bring school children to events who would otherwise never be at a book festival and perhaps never get the excitement and therefore the love of reading and of books. And the book festival su supports other smaller book festivals all over Scotland and that creates even wider access. So businesses support festivals as a form of corporate responsibility and festivals in turn display some of the same values of good corporate uh, citizenship, so the one sort of breeds the next. And if I put my business hat on, the rationale to do these things is similar in both types of institutions. Edinburgh's festivals bring economic benefit to the city and to Scotland more widely. That strengthens my customer base, small business owners, hoteliers, retailers, who benefit from the financial injection that the festivals create. So it's a win-win of corporate responsibility, just as I've described. Now, festivals, through their events, provide entertainment, controversy, education, stimulation. They typically do this on an annual basis or maybe several times during a year. But events can be one-offs as well and achieve much the same benefit. Recently, I hosted a couple of events at The Mound, our Scottish headquarters in the heart of Edinburgh. It's a hugely impressive and iconic building. If you, if you look from uh, Princess Street up in the road that goes up to the castle, you see a gigantic building, um, and that's The Mound. The events were for two charities, one of them Mary's Meals and the other Project Scotland. Based in Glasgow, Mary's Meals is an international movement to set up school-based feeding programs in countries overseas where poverty and hunger typically prevent children from gaining any education at all. Mary's Meals provides daily meals only in schools, not in any other context, for close to 400,000 children in Africa, Asia, Latin America, Eastern Europe. The promise of a free meal means that parents send their children to school because they get all the nourishment and vitamins they need every day if they turn up and get a kind of porridge, which is what they're given at lunchtime. It's a wonderfully one chari run charity and it's an incredibly worthy cause to be involved in. And the event that I hosted uh, involved partnering Mary's Meals, the charity, with the Scottish artist John Larry Morrison, who paints wonderfully vivid pictures of, uh, of the West Coast sort of seascapes, and they're very, very exciting, colorful paintings. We have a huge hall in this building. Um, first time ever, we set it up as an art gallery space, and we brought in a professional, professional picture hangers, and we uh, hung his pictures, so he had 48 pictures on display. Uh, and that then actually became an event. We had to have security, we had to open it to the public, we had to do all sorts of things. Uh, we did that internally, which was very interesting. The object of this was that he w was hoping to sell pictures, possibly to new, a new audience, and then he was giving a substantial portion of what he took in to this charity. He had been a supporter of the charity, we had been a supporter of his, we had been a supporter of the charity. We pulled all of those things together. And what we did is we held several private viewings before we opened the exhibition up to the public for our customers. Uh, and it was a chance to give a good word out to our customers about the bank. But it brought them in as potential new buyers of the art, but also they learned about Mary's Meals. These private viewings, the customers, 
uh, and probably because we had done it in a prestigious building that people wanted to come in and have a look at meant that a lot of people came and visited. And it actually worked really well for all parties. John Larry Morrison sold quite a few paintings. He's now got a bigger client list. Um, Mary's Meals uh, overall gained a great deal more exposure. A lot of people took away information so that they're now engaged with what Mary's Meals is doing. That was their primary objective with this. Secondary objective, of course, was to raise some money. Uh, and they did uh, manage to raise uh, enough money to feed 6,000 children for a year in Africa, uh, just from that one, that one event. I mean, absolutely fantastic. And of course, so it worked for both parties, but it also worked for Lloyd's Banking Group because not only were we supporting a charity we've worked with for years and so it made our staff feel very good, but we were also able to show that face of, of the bank. We were able to say to the bank, this is the kind of thing we care about. The press that banks have received over the last couple of years has been pretty woeful and some of it deservedly so, some of it not. But with this event, we were able to demonstrate our values, our commitment to the community and to this charity in particular. So we all benefited. The artist's works, as I say, were bought by new people. His client list grew. Mary's Meals gained exposure and a great deal of support. And we're hoping we can do this again at some point in the future. The Project Scotland event was similar. The event I hosted was Project Scotland's version of the Oscars. They call it the Voskers. That's the volunteering Oscars, recognizing volunteers who had achieved most within their program. Now volunteers come along to this event with their families and we give out awards and it's a little bit like mini Oscars but it's not as glitzy. Uh, we give out awards, we have video clips of all the finalists uh, and we create a great deal of goodwill and actually we create happiness and it's very hard to describe that. It sounds a funny thing to say but you look at the people there and they're genuinely happy. Project Scotland uses youth volunteering as a way to boost the capacity of the voluntary sector as well as to help young people learn important skills which might help them then into employment or education. And again, we've worked as a bank with Project Scotland for many years. Colleagues from all parts of the business have engaged on their mentoring programs. So we provide people in work, our staff, who mentor these young people who are not engaged in anything and help them, sort of ready them for a volunteering experience. And that begins to give them opportunities they might not have had before. Um, typically, these are young people who've had a difficult time, uh, and what we hope to do is help them develop ambition and confidence out of this program. And the engagement helps my colleagues as well because it lifts them out of the day-to-day -day and gives them a different perspective and experience, which I think makes them better in their roles in the bank. They see life a little differently, and they get a lot of gratification out of doing this. Valuing young people and helping them contribute in such a positive way, as I say, benefits everyone involved. So again, we think it's a great initiative for the bank to be uh, involved in. And we look at it and we evaluate the success of this initiative, the success of, success of Mary's Meals, the success of every festival or every other organization we partner with. We actually evaluate these. We put a value on what is the benefit to the partner and what is the benefit to the bank. Uh, we feel that these are all an investment in our business. They're not simply writing a check. By helping create events such as the ones I've just described, we demonstrate our engagement with communities at the same time as we signal we're a bank, but you know, we're open for business. Our doors are open, come in. And that's a critical message for us just now and one we can deliver in part through corporate responsibility that works much more effectively than a, 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 an article in the newspaper saying, yes, our doors are open, we're open for business. Oh, well, you're another bank. But when we do it like this, people begin to see who and what we really are and what we stand for.